Hi, I'm Justin and welcome to War Crown Forge. Today we're going to be forging a harpoon recurve bowie knife. And we're hoping to end up with something that looks a little bit like this. All right, let's get started. So as I've said, we're going to be forging a harpoon recurve bowie knife. Large blade, and I want to use a steel that's good for a chopper, so we're going to use some 1970s leaf spring. Off an old truck. It's 5160 steel, great steel for a chopper. All right, the steel is at forging temp, so we're going to take it out of the forge and get it started on the handle. We're going to start forging out the handle first, that way once it's all done, not only do we have a nice easy area to hold it by with the tongs, but we know exactly how much steel we have to play with to make the blade. All right. rough shape of the handle forged in, now we're ready to move on and start forging out the blade shape. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to forge in the harpoon section of the blade. So we want that little riser about halfway down, so we're going to forge this and the handle down on the spine. That way we leave that area up before we forge in the drop point. That'll be the slope of the bowie. that subtle harpoon spike up in there and that'll get more defined as we keep forging. All right, we're getting closer to the shape that we're looking for. Uh, we gotta forge this down a little bit, forge in the recurve in the belly, and push some of this meat up into the blade a little bit more. But we're on track. Right now we got the blade pretty darn close. <laughs> try, not to, try not to cuss on the video. Darn sounds awkward to me. <laughs> Shucks. All right. All right. Stop saying all right. <laughs> We've got the blade forged pretty close to the shape we were aiming for. So now we're going to start the thermal cycling. The thermal cycling, we're going to bring it up to bright orange and we're going to put it in the vise to let it air cool. We're going to do that three times to shrink the size of the grain structure of the steel to make it stronger and tougher. Um, 
We're going to take it out right now and throw it in the vise so it can do its first set of thermal cycling in the vise. All right, we're doing the first round of thermal cycling. We took it up to a bright orange and then put it in the vise to let it air cool to black. We're gonna do that two more times. We're gonna bring it up to a dull orange and then we're gonna bring it up to kind of a bright red. And that'll be it and we'll let air cool and then we'll do some touch up on the grinder just to true up the final shape even though we've already forged it to about 90% final shape. Then we're gonna bring it back, throw it in the forge, heat it up to non-ferromagnetic which we'll check with a magnet. And once it's there, then we're gonna quench it and let it cool and then it'll be on to the tempering process. All right, so there, there's the blade so far with what we were aiming for. Obviously, I got a little bigger than I planned on, but still gonna be fun. We still got the harpoon, we still got the Bowie clip point on there, and we still have the recurve. So we've hit all the specs and parameters that we wanted to. It's just not as close as I would have liked it to have been to my uh, design. All right, we're on the... <laughs> Okay, we started the last thermal cycling process. After that, once it's cool enough to handle, we're going to take it out to the shed and we're going to start grinding on it just to true up the shape and finalize it and getting it ready for the heat treat and then the tempering process. Okay, we got the uh, blade cleaned up on the grinder. We trued up the shape. Now we're getting ready to go and get it ready for uh, the quench and then onto the tempering since we already did the thermal cycling. Uh, we cut off a little excess, cleaned it up on the wheels on the grinder. That way you have uh, some of the nice recesses to, for your hand to sit comfortably in there with the palm swell add to your grip. Uh, it's a little heavy right now, a little thick. We're about a quarter inch thick because we had so much steel that I started out with. But, um, We'll thin that out with the grinding. All right, let's get on to the heat treat. All right, we got our blade out of the quench. Once it cools down, we're gonna throw it in the oven and start the tempering process. And we got a nice hard blade. That's a good sound. The file just skates across it. So we should be all good. And as soon as it cools down, we'll be ready for the temp. <laughs> 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 as soon as it cools down to uh, room temperature, we'll be able to throw it in in the oven and get its first round of tempering started. All right, so we've made some good progress and now we're on to grinding the bevels in. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scribe and I'm gonna scribe the center line. That way I know where to grind to and that way I also get a nice even grind for my bevels all the way down. After that, I'm gonna put on uh, the grinding belt and that I want, I'm gonna use a 40 grit belt. That way I can tear off a lot of material quickly, rapidly remove the metal. And then I'm gonna put this jig on right here so that I can make sure that my plunge lines are even.
right, we let the epoxy and the handle sit overnight so it's nice and strong. It's pinned with some brass tubes. Uh, so now we're on to getting it on the grinder so we can shape the handle and get it all fit and finished so we can get onto the hand sanding and the final part and then get this baby sharpened and test it. All right, the blade's all done. We've got it sharpened. It's got some curly Koa wood handles, and we got a false edge on the top and big fat hollow ground bevels that I did on a 12 inch contact wheel. And this bad boy's ready for a chop test. Let's see how we did. <laughs> that is so Sick.